a few months ago, my girlfriend of six years um, left me and the man that she left me for was a toxic male. What's up everybody? My name is Mel and welcome to Life Coaching by Mel. Here at Life Coaching by Mel, we speak truth. I'm not referring to my truth or your truth, I'm referring to the Lord's truth. This video is dedicated to anyone that's been affected by weak men. Whether you're in a relationship with a weak man, you're under the leadership of a weak man, or you are indeed a weak man. This video today is dedicated to you. This video will answer that pressing question of, why does no one like a weak man? And if you are that weak man, I have three steps that you can take today and going forward that will help you go from being viewed as that weak man to being viewed as a man of strength. Be sure you stay to the end of this video so you can get those three steps. You're right about the feminists. They do hate men, that's for sure. How did you come to recognize that they hate men? Um, well, the, the breaking point was uh, recently, my a few months ago, my girlfriend of six years um, left me and the man that she left me for was a toxic male. He was the type of male that I thought we were fighting against. But for some reason, she's gone with him and threw me to the side. And um, if they want to do that, that's fine, because I'm not going to participate in toxic masculinity and this type of game where you're just going to use me as bait or a designated driver to get you to your protest. You have a video here of J.C. Lee Peterson, who is a radio host, a YouTuber, a, pretty much a guy that goes viral all the time. Funny guy. Uh, he's interviewing a, a gentleman who deems himself as a male feminist. Uh, it seems like one of the biggest oxymorons in the world, if you ask me. But he deems himself a male feminist. And he is lamenting about how his girlfriend of six years, who he has partnered with to go on this feminist journey and dismantle the patriarchy and, and get rid of toxic masculinity and all these different ventures they have gone on together. She has now cheated on him with said toxic man, with an alpha male, so to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a rare occurrence. <laughs> this is something that happens often, but why does it happen often? I submit to you, and I think you believe it as well, that no one likes weak men. Now, as we proceed in this conversation, let's be sure that we are clear on our definition of a weak man. Now, for anyone, any man that's listened to this, it's important for you to know within yourself. It's important for me to know within myself who I am and what I am. But what this conversation is and what we're talking about today is what are you presenting to the world? How are you showing up in the world? Are you showing a man of strength or a man of weakness? And I think the best way to define a man of weakness is actually to define a man of strength. When you think of a man of strength, what are you thinking about? For me, when I think of a strong man, I think of a righteous man. A man that stands up for righteousness, even if that means he stands up alone. When faced with a situation or any type of issue, a righteous man, a strong man will face it head on and respond to it accordingly. Whatever the situation calls for, he will handle that accordingly. Even if there's a presence of fear, even if fear is there with him, he will still yet face that situation head on. A strong man is a protector. Rather that be a physical need, an emotional need, a spiritual need. He will protect those around him, even if that means with his voice. He will speak up for those who can't speak up for themselves. He will speak truth to power in order to rescue anyone from any type of hardship or any type of oppression, any type of danger that's ahead for this person. He will speak truth to that if need be. But when I think of a weak man... And this may just be for me. You can tell me what you think. I think of a man that panders. He panders to everyone around him, especially women. He denies his own beliefs in order to please everyone around him. His beliefs may change depending on the audience that he's in front of at that time. He desires to be liked by everyone, but his deepest desire is to be liked by women. Because oftentimes, you know, women complain about alpha men. You know, you see a woman that comes in an interaction with an alpha man and uh, it doesn't go in her favor. So she finds someone to complain to. And oftentimes it's that weak man. So the weak man takes into his mind that, oh, women don't like alpha men. Women don't like strong men. But he couldn't be more wrong because the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is actually indifference. 
Yeah, when you get to a point where you don't care about someone at all, at all and you don't even want to mention their name, it doesn't bother you if someone else mentioned their name. That's when you know you have reached a point of opposite of love. But hate, hate means there's actually still an emotional attachment. You still have a connection with this person. If things were to go different, you more than likely would get back with them. So the weak man missed this. They missed this and they missed the fact that she is truthfully fully into this alpha male, fully into this strong man. So instead of being truthful with her, he begins to do the opposite of what the alpha male does. And all that leads to is him immediately landing in the friend zone and never becoming an actual option for this woman that he really wants. But even if she does choose to be with him, she always desires to be with a strong man or an alpha male. Weak man! I have a news flash for you. Somebody else may not ever tell you, but your boy Mel got you. Your wife or your girl, your lady, whatever you call her, more than likely, it's a high probability that she has a strong man, an alpha male in her mind right now that she desires to be with. Not saying that she would leave you. If he had her, she would. But she would love to be with that man. If only for one night. <laughs> the point is, every woman that's with a weak man desires to be with a strong man. Here's a little anecdotal proof. I'm a drummer at a local church here, and we have a system that we call AVM. And basically, it's an in-ear monitor mix where you can control which mics within your instrument or other instruments or even in the room, you know, you control the volume of each of those mics. I like to have the room mic up at certain points of the service or certain points of my uh, performance. There was one particular day that I had this room mic up, and this was after service. There's a man at the church, and you can picture this with me. It's a man at the church. He's a prominent man inside the church. He's, I won't say his position because it may give it away for anyone that watches this. He's also ex-military. When I see this man, I see a man's man. It's someone, he's upper 50s, probably early 60s, well fit, always well groomed, clothes are sharp. He speaks with authority, speaks with conviction. I mean, devout man of God. No one would ever question whether he's in tune with his faith or not. He's the type of man that superheroes are. You know, the, the man that men want to be like and women want to be with. I hear him, he was near the stage, so the room mic picked him up very clearly. He minded his own business. All of a sudden, a woman comes up to him, and she instantly starts flirting with him. I'm talking about instantly. I mean, he had a little gold chain. She said, oh, I see you, see you gold chain. Oh, you looking good today. I mean, just in church, you know, just straight up flirting with this man. This man is married, by the way. I didn't point that out. He's standing by himself. He's married. She flirted with him, you know, complimenting his clothes, complimenting who he was as a man. And he just took all this in stride. He was quiet for the longest. Then he said this. Well, how's your husband doing? I'm like, oh, this lady married. Yeah. You know, I don't know the lady, but I'm like, dang, she married. And I can't actually physically see them, although I tried. But <laughs> I only can hear them. When I tell you this lady began to essentially talk down about her family situation and down about her husband, she would do it quickly and swiftly because she immediately wanted to get back to the conversation with him about him. She wanted to be with this man, but he would not take the bait. Now, honestly, it was a proud moment. I'm like, I looked at this man always like an alpha male, a strong man, a man that can handle adversity. And he had no clue anyone was listening to him, but he took all of her passes and just shifted them. Every single time she made a pass at him, he shifted it to a either mutual conversation by something about the church, or he shifted right back to her family. So that was a moment I was so proud of this man and man in general. But I will say as well, the way this lady complained about her husband and her family, it let me know that her husband more than likely doesn't exemplify the characteristics that this strong man does. She more than likely views her husband as a weak man and now is desiring to be with a man of strength. Now, the guy I'm referring to, he could very well be a weak man at home. He could just be having a persona at church or when he's out and about that that's not truly who he is. And honestly, but ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're referring to today. We're not referring to what's inside of you because you within yourself should know who you are. You don't need the rest of the world to affirm and confirm who you are. However, how is the world treating you? How do the world respond to you? That's a true indication of how you are showing up to the world. So let's answer that question. Why does no one like weak men? When it comes to women, women that are feminine, 
and has feminine energy typically lean towards a man that is strong because they view him as a protector. That's why typically when you see a woman that deems herself as an alpha woman, if she's with the alpha male, that relationship is not going to last long because it's like two bucks going together. You know, it's just not going to survive. Somebody going to get taken out in this thing. It's just not going to work. But you see an alpha woman typically would choose more of a weak man. But let's take it off of women and put it on men. If there's a room full of men and a situation arise, i.e. a robbery, we gonna lean on the person who has the most skills and the most experience and probably the most weaponry to help each of us survive. So therefore we are leaning on the strong man in that situation. In a family dynamic, having a strong man and a strong leader puts everyone at ease. It's so comforting. I can imagine one of the most comforting things for a wife to be able to say, my husband got it. Or for a child to say, daddy helped me and have full confidence that he can actually help them. And it brings total discomfort to the family when a man is totally checked out or he doesn't have a backbone or his favorite phrase is, you know, go ask your mama or whatever you say, dear. We all have seen that family that seems to be hanging on by a thread. And the thought that comes to your mind is like, man, this family is just lacking leadership. It's lacking direction. What is going on? What is lacking is a strong man. Colossians 3 instructs men to not be harsh with our wives. It also says, do not provoke your children. But those two instructions does not cancel the mandate that God has over men. That we are to be loving leaders of those around us, especially those in our household. Just a couple of scriptures here in 1 King 2, verses 2 through 3, it says this, When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Joshua 1 and 7, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. I fully encourage you guys to go read over those chapters and you'll see the backgrounds of those stories. But these are charges that men are charging other men and God is charging those men to be strong and very courageous, to be real men, be a strong man. In their cases, they were leading people to where God was taking them. And God is actually calling each and every one of us as men to lead each of our flocks or each of our circles or each of our family to where he wants us to be. Is it possible to go from being viewed by the world as a weak man to being viewed by the world as a strong man, a man of strength and courage. I got to say emphatically, yes. And how do I know this? It's because it happened for me. It was a point in my life that I was viewed as a very weak man by those around me. Not a leader, can't get right. And frankly speaking, I viewed myself as such as well. I saw weakness when I looked in the mirror. So these are the three steps I took, and I believe it can work for you as well. The first step, I need you to do something right now. Picture in your mind a man that represents strength to you. Any man, it could be anyone. Whether it be a father, whether it be a mentor, whether it be someone online that you don't know their complete life, but when they present themselves to the world, you see a man. What I need you to do from this day forward, study that man. Study the things that you love about that man. Study the things that you believe shows up as a man. That man very well may have failures along the way. The more you follow them, the more you expose yourself to who they are, you may see moments of failure. But we do know the measure of a man is not about him failing and falling. It's about how many times he get back up. So that in itself can help you to view him even more as a man. It can give you insight on how you can do that as well. Number two. Dress the part. I think this is the most important because we missed the whole first impression idea. The first impression is a lasting impression, but sometimes you can have a bad impression and improve on that along the way. And yes, dress the part is a part of your actual attire and the way you groom yourself. That is important. The reason it's important, and really hear me out here, people won't trust you to take care of them if they don't see that you take care of yourself. Our attire matters. Our weight matters. That's something I have seen myself improve on over the years. I'm steady working on it. It's important for us to take care of ourselves first. 
I believe emphatically that I only can help people out of the abundance of what I have. I can't be working from a deficit and hoping to help others with whatever they may need. People will only treat you how you present yourself. If you're looking around and wondering why so many people don't respect you, they cut you off when you talk, they don't admire what you do, you never get compliments from others. And if they do, it's like a something you have to fish for a compliment. If that's the case for you, what are you presenting? Stop pointing the finger at others Look in the mirror and not from a victim standpoint, but from an accountability standpoint. Be real with yourself. If you can't be real with no one else. And the last thing, number three, say less and make your words count. You can always tell when someone is not confident in themselves. You can always tell when someone is not sure of what they believe because they want to talk first. They want to be the first to speak. What I find myself often doing, and I'm not exalting myself at all, but I sit back for the most part <laughs> and allow people to speak say their full thoughts so that when I speak, my words actually matter. And typically, not always, but typically when I speak, people are quiet, they listen, and they respect what I'm saying. Because I'm really sold in my convictions. Not saying I'm right about everything, but the word of God is right. So I try not to veer too far away from what the word of God says. I'm trying my darnest to be a righteous man and a man that God can look at and be proud of. That I'm leading with love, that I'm leading righteously. And that's what a strong man is. And this is something I have to challenge myself to do every single day. Because that weak man continuously wants to come back. That weak man continuously wants to be prominent in my life. So every day I challenge myself to put God at the forefront of my life. And as he leads me, I lead those around me. I'm a follower of the almighty God, so there's no weakness in me because I'm a son of the king. I hope this video was helpful for someone. If it was, be sure to hit me in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this topic, what you think about this video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you can get each and every one of my videos. I appreciate your support. Love you guys. Take care. Let's go.